Hi everybody. Let's talk about symbiosis or symbiotic relationships today. Remember, this ecology unit is all about interactions. Yeah. How organisms interact with the environment and how organisms interact with other organisms. Now, <clears throat> there are three types of symbiotic relationships we're going to talk about today. The first of these three types is called mutualism. In a mutualistic relationship, the two different species that are interacting with each other both benefit by this interaction. The example that we see pictured here on the slide right, shows an eel. Right? And an eel likes to hunt in a coral reef. And an eel's a top level, level predator. Right? So it swims around uh, these coral reefs. And as it swims around, you'll see all these little fish kind of like hide away from these big, scary, like razor sharp teeth that the eel has inside of its mouth. Right? And all the crabs scurry away. And all these little organisms try to get out of the way. Right? So the eel slowly swims through the reef. And then it finds a place to kind of like sit down. And it opens its mouth as wide as it can. And then this stupid little shrimp crawls right up the eel's body and into its mouth. Like, what are you doing, you little shrimp? Don't you know that's the last place you want to be? But the eel never bites down the shrimp. Instead, that shrimp crawls into its mouth and starts cleaning the eel's teeth. You see, this time the eel visited the reef not to hunt, not for a meal, but it needed to go to the dentist, and the shrimp acts as the eel's dentist. So the eel gets the benefit of having dental work done. Right. The shrimp is benefited by this relationship because it gets a free meal by eating all the organisms that are inside of that eel's mouth, like parasites and things like that. Now, once the shrimp is done doing its dental work, the eel could easily chomp down and devour that little shrimp, but it doesn't. Right? Because even the eel knows that if you murder your dentist, nobody's going to clean your teeth. So this is a mutualist relationship. They are both benefited by helping each other out here. The second type of symbiotic relationship that we're going to talk about is something called commensalism. And in this type of relationship, one organism benefits, but the other is unaffected. So here in this picture, we have some type of large shark, maybe a great white shark. And we see attached Directly to the body of this large shark are these smaller fishes, right? Those smaller fish are called remoras, right? They've actually been following around great white sharks for so long that their bottom fins have essentially turned into suction cups so they can kind of stick themselves right to the body of that great white shark. Right? Now, the reason why a small fish would follow around a shark it's because sharks are notoriously messy eaters, right? So when they, like, attack a seal or something, they bite onto it and they shake their head back and forth very violently, ripping that seal apart, causing all these little uh, bits of seal flesh to go floating around in the ocean. And then these little fish can detach themselves from the side of the shark's body and gobble up all those little bits of, of seal flesh the shark leaves behind. It's like eating the crumbs. Now... The remoras, these tiny fish, are benefited by getting the free meals, getting the leftovers of the sh what the sharks eat. But the sharks don't really get any benefit uh, whatsoever from these little remoras, right? They're not harmed by the remoras, but they're not helped, okay? In fact, if one of those little fish was dumb enough to swim directly in front of those sharks' jaws, it would have no problem gobbling it up, all right? Um, so here, the remora is benefited, but the shark is not affected. The last relationship um, that we need to talk about is a symbiotic relationship that we're probably most familiar with, and that's parasitism. In parasitism, one organism is benefited. That's the parasite. But the second organism is harmed by this relationship. We call that second organism the host. Okay? Um, like I said, this is the relationship that we're probably most familiar with. Right? When you think of like parasites, you probably think of like mosquitoes and Ticked. Um, those are both ectoparasites because uh, they're outside of their host organism. What we see in the picture is something called a tapeworm. This is called an endoparasite, which uh, uh, is found on the inside of its host. In fact, this tapeworm attaches itself to your intestines. I had a, uh, a professor in college once 
that was eating a bowl of rice. And, and she was kind of like a crazy cat lady. So as she's eating this bowl of rice, uh, cats are like jumping up on the table and she's pushing them away with one hand. But the cats kept on jumping up on the table and while she's eating her rice and then at, she dropped a few grains of rice on the table. So she's picking them up one by one and popping them into her mouth. But then she pops this one grain of rice into her mouth. And she's like, wait a minute. This one tastes a little funny. And then she looks at the cat in the bowl of rice and the cat in the bowl of rice again. And goes, wait a minute. And looks at the cat's butt and sees baby tapeworms crawling out of the cat's butt and falling on the table. Right? And a baby tapeworm is the exact same shape, size, color as a grain of white rice. So she mistakenly swallowed a baby tapeworm thinking it was a grain of white rice. Now, a normal person would just go to the doctor now, take some medicine which would kill the tapeworm and then, you know, since it's in your intestines, you got to kind of just poop it out. But her, being a crazy cat woman, decides that she's going to let this tapeworm grow inside of her um, for a little bit. Because how often do you get a tapeworm living inside of you? So she lets it grow inside of her for a couple of weeks until it starts physically making her sick, right? And it makes you sick by absorbing all the nutrients from the food before your intestines have a chance to absorb it. So she waits till she's getting sick from malnutrition before she goes to the doctor, um, takes the medicine, and passes the tapeworm in the toilet. 